let me just quickly ping in streamer news. Hey James, how are you? Can you hear me all right? <laughs> okay, thank you. Nice, cheers, thank you. Yeah, she's uh, she's quite big, isn't she? Well. I don't assume that boards have a gender, but it's hefty. <laughs> Thing is that the keyboard itself is only this big. This huge bezel around the edge is just basically empty space inside. But you'll see, well, you watch the VOD if you're not watching the stream, but you'll see when I open it up, it weighs a lot as well, even though there's not very much in actual keyboard inside it. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Well, I'll just give it a few... <laughs> that is Italian, because I bought this board from a guy in Italy. So, I'm not sure if they actually use that layout now but they used to use that layout for some reason <laughs> that's why it's got all of these funny like the European sort of extra things that they like to put on keys to all of the uh letters. I'm sure if Spani was in here he'd highly reprimand me that from calling them little things but yeah you know the little sort of the apostrophe above the E's and the funny little tails on the C's and stuff like that. I know that they're very important for the ones in Europe but not so much for nowadays. Just give it another minute or so in case anyone else pops in before I start. But yeah, I had some fun last night because I was uh, doing a little bit of prep beforehand. So this is probably a first. I have a USB to serial cable that I've made. Because the default connector on the back of this board is a 25, well, I suppose it would be parallel rather than serial. But anyway, the big 25 pin what you would normally put for your connect your printer 
of course, I didn't have to use this. I could have just not had a connector on there at all, but that would have been a huge, big... No, you, you, you don't... Your, the Waytech one is a different connector entirely. It's not a parallel connector. <laughs> well, like I say, James, if you, when, uh, okay, see you, James, but I was just saying that it, when, if you want to have a meet up at Jay's place or whatever, I'll definitely bring my Waytech round with all of the cables and show you, because it's different. Okay. I'll see you around then if you have a break. So if we flip this, so I'll start by telling a bit about the machine that this keyboard actually attached to itself. So it's what is you it um, it was used in the printing industry so everyone knows of what like you know the basic start of printing when they had the printing presses that used individual key blocks that were used to be laid out for using a pay, a newspaper that had then was pressed on to generate the page well then the in about the 70s and 80s instead of having printing presses like that they moved on to using uh, digital printing so they would have a what's called a photo typesetting machine so that basically meant that the characters that you would type onto the display would then be basically printed using a uh, light sensitive film like what you'd have on like a say a projector today you'd have obviously the characters are printed on the clear film which then when your light shines through them you see the characters on the display so then they could basically print characters onto photosensitive paper So that's what these, this machine, this keyboard was originally attached to. So that's why it's got all of these funny, like all of these numbers to the right, to the left, and then all these funny key combinations and symbols and goodness knows what. They were all designed for the, for what the, um, the Linotype machine was. So on the back, if I fold this round, now if I hold this up to the camera, not sure if the light's going to pick it up. But yeah, you can see that it was made by the Mergantha Linotype company because uh, Linotype is basically the uh, stage before the photo typesetting which was basically instead of uh, making single little individual blocks they could basically cast out a full line instead of each individual block so you got basically a line of type which then got 
condensed to linotype. So this was made in West Germany, as you can see. So, like I say, in the obviously in the 80s, the Germany was still divided. There was the Berlin Wall, so that's why it says made in West Germany. And then, if we look at the very back, you can see there is the 25-pin parallel collector on the original daughter board inside. So then if we open it up by removing these four screws Take off the base. You see that the if I bring it closer, you'll see that there is a controller board up here which connects to the keyboard matrix directly through this ribbon cable. So if I remove the ribbon cable like that. Then we have the main uh, controller board here. So it's this controller board that I will be replacing with my own. But I'm just going to take out and further disassemble the top case first and then I will come back to the internal board. Okay, so here is the back plate to the keyboard. So it's held onto the main front of the case by these five screws and then the back plate itself is then held onto the keyboard PCB with these screw smaller screws in the center. Oops, sorry for that, I knocked the camera. So I'm going to take out the actual keyboard and so there is the top cover. You can see that all of the screw threads have brass inserts so that the uh, screw holes aren't going to break 
and you can see it at the side just how thick this wall is it's difficult to see on the with the case being so dark but that must be at least coming up to to uh, 10 mil thick so it's definitely very solidly built I don't quite know what the material is it's obviously been molded but It's just very thick plastic. Okay, I'll put the top away for now. So here is the back plate. Get a fuzzy drive screwdriver for this. The thing I love about industrial boards like this is that they didn't save or save on cost. These weren't aimed at the home user, so they didn't have to stay within a set budget. Therefore, they didn't have to compromise on quality. So, if I just leave off this top fight. You'll see that each individual thread is held on by brass inserts again that are pushed through from the back side of the board then if I turn it over you can see here are the aluminium sorry the brass inserts where the PCB sits Again, this is probably about one point, probably about one point five mil thick. So it's quite solid. So then here is the PCB itself. So you'll see, notice that each switch has four pins. So these are Raffi or Raffi Hall effect switches. So these are linear, but they are dampened and they are really quite smooth I think because this was the keyboard was designed for being in obviously a printing press room where there is potentially quite a lot of dust that could be in the air 
from the uh, obviously there were various printing machines so therefore contact base switches could have potentially been gummed up I mean or it could be the case of that again because they didn't want they didn't have to worry with costs so therefore they could just afford to deck out the whole board in the uh, in these switches so you'll see here that there are quite a number of unfilled points so these have pads for so that they could have put switches in there but they decided to leave them unfilled so the each switch has as you can see has the four pads that are connected to the Hall effect sensor plus the single pin opposite which is just a mechanical uh, attachment point so the, pit, the pins on either side are 5 volts in and ground then the two inner pins you have a enabler pin and an output pin so what this means is that the board will only output well it, so the when you press the switch it will only output if the uh, acceptor pin is actually powered so as like i say as well as obviously powering needing power for the uh, ground and 5 volts it will only output a key code if that enabler pin is also held has power at the same time so this is how it obviously you don't need any diodes because you don't get any output without the without that uh, enabler pin having uh, been powered so I did trace out the matrix so it has a total of six rows with a total of 15 columns so what the how this is laid out and I'm actually holding this upside down so how this is laid out is you go from you start at this side so your first row is the first obviously the first 15 switches so then the next row starts here so then you'd obviously have 1 to 15 columns then the next row 1 to 15 and the next so it doesn't follow the normal grid where you'd have normally all of these you'd have only five rows but then a whole load of columns so this one it basically has starts each row after each 15 so I'll just leave this here whilst I bring back the original bottom piece and I'll just disconnect this the original programming board from the bottom case
So this is the original programming board. Well, I'd say programming board. I don't know if the actual processor was done on the host machine. So this might just be basically condensing and then sending some sort of output to the host machine that might actually do the processing of the uh, key codes. So that's what these chips and various things do. So what I intend to do is I have designed my own mini daughter board using the exact whole measurements of the original complete with the as you can see a serial input to again match what the original uh, board has I'm going to power I'm going to link it to the main PCB using a ribbon cable again and then this is going to feed the basically the key matrix directly into a Teensy 2 plus plus which will then generate obviously the USB normal key codes which will then be sent go through the uh, serial to the PC so it is a lot of work I could like I say I could have just not bothered with this connection and just had a USB cable coming straight out it would have been about £40 cheaper but at the end of the day I wanted to maintain the aesthetics of the original so we shall be building this small board building the ribbon cable with the connectors linking it and then we shall see if it all actually works I have no idea if it is going to work if it does I shall be very happy if it doesn't then I will go back to the drawing board and look and see why it's not working just have a look yeah as you can see I've measured up so it fit directly into the where the original board went so I'm going to work on assembly of this first so I'll just put the everything else to one side which is basically the top of my CPU tower okay so we will need parts so this is the ribbon cable for later on I did get these made by all PCB they're not a sponsor or anything but they do offer basically completely free PCB prototypes one uh, one use per month as long as they're below 10 by 10 centimeters so I hadn't used them for prototypes before but as they offer this service and as this is a small board it was great that I could get them made and I didn't pay a penny not in production and not in shipping so that was a great help 
so I do have four spare PCBs. Here is the socket that I'm going to be putting the uh, Tintsy on. So there's a Tintsy USB cable that I've already chopped the end off and stripped the wires ready for soldering directly onto the circuit board. Small header for the ground pin that I need to use at the very back. header for the uh, sorry for the uh, ribbon cable that is going to go on here so this is basically almost exactly the same part as what is on the original PCB Obviously, it's slightly they've updated the part number because I'm wondering that there's probably a good 40 years between the two parts, but you can still get them, which is good. Then we have the connector assemblies for the ribbon cable, which we will get to after the main PCB is built. And also we have the parallel connector for the board. So I did have to do some DIY work on this. It originally came with two posts either side that I had to then remove and I decided to go old school goal with these retaining clips. So yeah, they're not strictly needed because there's going to be enough to hold the board in place of out but they look cool anyway okay let's get the soldering iron on Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is solder on the uh, I'll probably get this soldered on first. Or do I want to do the no, I'll do the USB cable first, because then that means I can get in with my soldering iron onto this. So I'm going to use spare PCBs just to lift the main board off slightly. Should be up to temperature now. Okay. 
if I saw it right ahead. Turn that on. Make sure it's clean. Now the order that I soldered the cable on was black, yellow, green, red. I know it's probably not the proper USB standard, but as it's just going cable to cable, as long as the two ends are all right, then it should work perfectly fine. So I'm just going to solder the uh, black pin in now. I really need to replace the display in this because I can barely see what the temperature is. The white Green.
Okay, that's the USB cable fully soldered in. So I'll just clip these access on the other side. Okay. Now I can solder on the serial pin. And this is going to have be attached to the board with some nuts and bolts. I just realised I'm going to need my pair of grips as well as the hex key. So I'm just going to screw down the this connector before then soldering it in. Okay, that's that done. So, the only pins that actually need to be soldered are the first four pins here because they're directly linked to the USB. So, they're the only ones that I'm going to bother soldering.
Okay. that is the serial connection done. Next I will do the socket for the microcontroller. Now I'm going to need to just snip off this back section because we do have pins down here that we will need to use. So I will do two pins, one on either side, then I can make sure everything is then pressed down as I need to. Just do one this side. Okay, so that is in. Now I'm just going to do this little small one at the edge. I haven't lost the in quick 
quickly solder the this pin. I need a ground, and the most accessible ground was at the end. So I'll just solder the rest of these pins. Now not all of these pins are going to be used, but because the because I was using screws or obviously with the 25 pin connector on the edge, I didn't feel feel the need to solder the connections that weren't being used anyway. But as the main socket is only held in by the solder joints, that's why I'm going to solder the all of them. Okay. Those are all nice and done. So that is our socket ready for the TNC. So for the TNC itself I do have in my bag of goodies from DigiKey
these special really expensive Milmax pins which I will be using to connect the teensy with the circuit board. I must not drop any of these on the floor because they are very, very expensive for what they actually are. But whilst I could have just used diode legs or something similar, I just think that if I'm making all this effort of putting connectors on and what's not, then I might as well do things properly. These pins are really hard to pick up. Just make sure they're pushed into the socket. There we go. be easier to just pick them up and put them in with the grips. If anyone watching has any questions that they want to ask me, feel free, either about the board that I am working on or any of the other boards that I own. Then I can answer them. to do is actually use a diode pen for the that one. Let me just see if I can find 
He's done it. Like that. Oh, it's a bit thinner, like that. Don't use, hopefully, this one from a capacitor this should fit in this socket. Resistors have got slightly thicker leads, so they might be all right. Yeah, these are work. These are work. Sorry about that. These are slightly different pin sockets that I'm using for the ones on the end and they are for his larger pin. off the rest now.
found with how to shut that. Okay, that's all of the pins that are needed. I can compare using one of my spare PCBs. Oh, I missed the 5 volts. We need one for the 5 volts. Which is this one right at the front. So we've got one all the way down until just before the U1 which is on there as well as the middle one at the back because that's the ground then you looking at it from the underside you can see that from the second one in first seven have pins then there's a break then the next four have pins so the reason why there is a break in this one is this one this pin here is d6 and d6 contain or is also linked to the led on the tnc and so when it's doing its scan the LED can cause problems with the scanning and it picking up false positives and things like that. There is a way to basically make that pin usable. So on the Tensi you see there's this LED down here which is the one that is linked to D6. On the underside of the TNC, you can see the trace running from D6 to the fire, which then connects to the LED. So if you basically use a knife or some other way to break that trace going from D6 to the LED, then that will then shut off the path to the LED and therefore make that pin usable but I had plenty of pins so I didn't need to bother using that so if I now put this on the back make sure the the one on the back goes through ground which is the centre back pin and the rest of the pins should make it drop down and then I will now solder the rest of those pins on the top which should in theory make the teensy able to be removed so I don't think I will ever remove it but socketing it is just nice for nice anyway That's a hundred, three hundred, so I can now take my soldering iron.
I can now go through and solder all of those socket pins. Okay, that's all of the Tinsy soldered in place. So, as you can see, the USB cable just plugs in like that. It's just easier, I find, doing it that way because unfortunately the Tinsy does not have separate pads for uh, the USB pins other than through the connector itself and trying to solder onto those tiny little pads on the Teensy after removing the connector isn't fun. I've already had to do it on several Teensies because of having ripped off the pads by removing the connectors. I'm just going to trim this ground pin on the back. <laughs> so that is in place. Now the only thing left to solder on here is the ribbon cable connector, which is here. So you'll see that on the side that it's got a down arrow which matches with the arrow on the PCB. So basically the four 
pins on the left are 5 volts, 5 pins on the right are ground. This pin right at the very back is not connected because on the actual uh, main uh, matrix that pin is not connected itself either. And if I go and show you the ribbon cable, which I will do shortly, you'll see that the actual connector, the female connector, actually has a piece of plastic shoved up that where that pin would go. That just sits down like that. So I shall now as before solder a couple of pins just to make sure that it sits firmly. Proceed to solder in the remaining pins. Move these bags out of the way. So that 
Is all the soldering done? So I'll just turn off my iron for now. So I'll just go back to the original PC. Oh, first of all, I better clear away these pins because they are very expensive for what they are. I do not want them disappearing on the floor. Okay, so here's the original PCB. So as you can see at the very back, you can see that this pin just here has a piece of blue plastic in it. So that's the pin that is not actually going to be connected to anything. So what we need to do now is we need to replicate this ribbon cable. So yeah it is a dummy pin. I mean they, it does have a lock on the front just here. So therefore it can only go in one way. But yeah, it does help when the obviously the cable is twisted. So you can see as well on the cable that the outside is blue. So that same blue edge is the blue pin. So that basically tells you that no matter how many times you flex it and turn it, then you're always going to get a, the same pin alignment at each end. So what we need to do now is build the ribbon cable assembly. So again, you can see that the part that I've got is going to turn out to be almost the same as the part that was originally used. because I wanted to keep this whole thing as true to the original as possible obviously with the use of the microcontroller and USB so now what I need to do start at one end, make the connection that is going to be on the switch on the uh, switch PCB and then measure the amount of cable that I'm going to need to go to this. So I have a total of 
five foot of this ribbon cable, which I won't need, but I could, that was the second shortest length that I could get. So the way that this is designed to terminate is it goes through and then loops back on itself and then when it loops back on itself that's when this part cuts into the ribbon cable and makes a connection with these pins at the bottom So what I need to do is get a similar connection at the end that it is here. If that is lined up, then I should be able to just squeeze these together. Which should then puncture through the insulation on the ribbon cable. So that is the first part done. So now we need to curl it around so that it sticks out this way. This strain relief as well. So now that matches up with the old one like that. Probably 
probably not as neatly, but it will do the job. Okay. I'm going to cut mine a bit longer because I can always shorten it at the end. I have got enough cable to redo if necessary. So now this red bit needs to correspond with this pin here because remember this red bit is the blank pin that doesn't have any connection whatsoever so that needs to correspond with that pin down there. I think I'm just going to test this with the rest of the board put together so I can get the right length. So I'll just put these to one side for a moment whilst I reassemble the board. Okay, that's aligned back up.
and now to put it back in the top case. Sorry if I went off shot for that. It is just a large board for what I am used to working with. I haven't got enough desk real estate. Okay, bring the bottom back. Trying to find where the hole is. There we go. Final screw in.
Now before I put the cable in, do the two halves go together without the cable? to go from here to the cable connection up there. in like that. So I need this red line to go this red line on the very left of the ribbon cable needs to go to that pin down there. Original board. The original board went back on itself. angle then at a right angle again before then going I think that will fit in better with the connector on the end to then go into the one on the top base. Because obviously this is attaching to the bottom of the PCB which is the opposite side of that. that would be the wrong side of where this needs to go so
that will keep this red to the left hand side of this connector sorry I am off screen there so we need to get that pin to be on the red Make sure to squeeze so it, the teeth cut into this. Fold this back on itself. Put the last Put the plastic tags on. go so then this will then slot in here Sorry about that, I just need to force this in. There we go. Now, am I going to get into a problem? proud of the case so it's hitting it onto the
back of the map play. I might need to look for a right angle there. Connector. So I shall screw it up as far as I can do. Oops. Well, the <laughs> there won't be much sound from it because, as I said before, James, that they are linear switches. So you will not hear much whatsoever. But I will need to look at a right angled uh, ribbon cable connector for that. If I can even screw this together because of the... to put too much stress on these joints. But yeah, I will definitely need to look at a different connector for the ribbon cable. I mean by that is that you can see that this one comes straight out of the PCB so what I need to look for is something similar to this or like I say a right angled one so instead of sticking up it sticks outwards so it shouldn't be a, too much of a hassle to just get a replacement connector Ish. Not sure if you can hear this because, like I say, it is quite a quiet board. Yeah, let me bring the mic down. The switches themselves are actually also dampened as well. So at the end of the slider, uh, there is a small ring, uh, rubber ring at the end, the bottom, so that it does dampen out the the bottom stroke. But because there are n there's no switch leaf, so you're not going to get the extra sound. And they feel quite light. They're not like a, a heavy switch. But they feel quite nice to use. That's the main reason why I'm wanting to convert this because so it could actually be used. But yeah, this they feel really smooth. And that's despite having no lube whatsoever. The only lube that I've put in is I have lubed the stabilizers for the spacebar, but other than that, it's completely stuck. But I am hoping to take this for to uh, well, 
when we finally do have a, a next meetup. So now the moment of truth. To plug in the serial connector. fits in like that so you can see now why I left wanted to leave that serial connector just so you didn't have a gaping hole Okay, nothing is registering. So it is either something wrong with how I have configured it inside or something else. Let me see if this does it still recognize it as a keyboard yes it's still saying that there's a keyboard so I think it flashed all right So I need to go and double check things, but I I'm prepared completely for this to happen because this is the first time that I am doing this, so I am prepared for things to not play right. So I just need to go and So something is not right, but I don't know if that is through the programming or something else. I'm thinking I'm going to have to spend the afternoon with the multimeter to check things. So unless anyone has any last questions. I will be ending the stream very shortly. I didn't get it to output anything, but like I say, I think that that's going to be something probably fairly simple that I just need to check through.
yeah I just need to uh, obviously double check everything make sure I haven't gone and accidentally crossed pins or something like that, similar like that I need to get a right angle connection for the for going into the actual um, PCB itself because the distance the height of the normal connector is too high but other than that I think I'm going to end the stream so thank you those of who have been watching thank you James for uh, chatting and I hope that it's just an easy fix that I need to do and I can get this thing working so I shall post in the discord if I do get any life out of it so thank you for watching and just before you go I'll give you a quick teaser of what I'm probably going to be doing next because I have either I've got my uh, Mizuiki coming, I've got the uh, I've got my SCOG reboot coming and I've also finally should hopefully be getting uh, my Southpaw full size that I got the spot over two years ago should hopefully be shipping soon so I've got those three keyboards coming in and then I have also got I've also got a full size build coming so this is another PCB that I designed again using the a uh, TNC because I did fully design this using uh, a full microcontroller and everything else and then the actual cost to do the SMD soldering was just too much so I took the same uh, copy of the design and then completely re uh, did the retrace retraced it to uh, use through whole components so I shall be building this I've already got the keyboard sorted for it I just need a couple more parts and then as soon as uh, Infinity Veneer comes in because that's what's going to go on this board so I shall be building that so I have a few more builds as you see coming over the next couple of months or so and then I do have some more but they will be next year when the key sets and group parts come in so I hope that you have enjoyed the time here and I shall see you next time goodbye